welcome again to Food for Your Heart. And today we have a very unique topic to discuss. It's called God meant it for good. This is an amazing statement from the scriptures and we all need it because all of us in life run into situations and problems that we think, oh, this is so bad. Why does this happen to me? And what have I done wrong? But God has an amazing ability to turn everything around and turn it for good. And the story uh, we have for this is, first of all, a scripture uh, from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, before we go to the scripture. And it says, and we know that all things, all, look at the word all, that is, a, that is an elaboration. It means whatever may happen to you, even hardships, difficulties, uh, traumatic things, accidents, being fired, a sickness. If the, if the Bible says all, it means all. God has a way to make all things work together for good, for those who love God. That is a condition. So you cannot apply the promise without meeting the condition. You need to love God. If you listen to this program, if you look to this program and you love God and you go through a very hard time at this very moment, I want to assure you that God will use it for your benefit. Even the enemy have brought these problems to you with the purpose to destroy you, but God is in amazing power, will turn it in your benefit. He will turn it for good. I don't say that we can see always these answers from this side of eternity. We might not know and see the answers always, but we have a number of stories in the Bible, amazing stories, where we actually see how God turned things out for good and we will we will research one story in particular, but uh, I'm just reminded about the story of uh, uh, King, Queen Esther. Esther was a Jewish girl that was in exile in Babylon with her uncle, and, uh, and then she was chosen uh, and elected, and she became actually the queen from the king of Babylon. She was chosen to be the queen, and she was at uh, the court of the king, and, and there was Haman. He hated the Jewish people. Like today, we see in the world people hating the Jewish people. Uh, and, and it happened in those days that Haman was uh, hating the Jewish people and had in mind to destroy them. But God, if you read the story of, uh, of Esther, you see that God used all the circumstances to turn things around and to turn things so much around that even though Haman had the intention to kill them, God used it to bless them. Instead of killing them, they were promoted. Instead of uh, being killed, they killed the enemy. Instead of being losers, they became victors. That is in the mind of God. And so don't lose heart, don't lose hope. Always be confident that God is on your side if you love him. And if you're called according to his purposes. If you have received Christ as your Savior, if you love Jesus as your Lord and Savior, be assured, my friend, be assured, whoever you are, that God will make all, 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 all things work together for good. Even though at this moment you may not see his face, you don't understand his ways. There are times that God seems to hide his face for us. And there are many stories in the Bible telling it, and I'll give you a few examples. Uh, in the story we read uh, in, the, in the Songs of Solomon, that the bridegroom hide his face for his bride for a season. Joseph was hiding his face for his brothers. They didn't recognize him when they went into Egypt. Samuel was hiding his face for King Saul. King Saul was waiting for Samuel to come and he didn't show up in the proper time. According to Saul, he came, but according to Saul, he came too late. And God hided his face to Job when Job was tested in the book of Job. 
and he was sick and he was in difficulties and he didn't understand why all this was happening. God was hiding his face for a season. But if you finish the book of Job, you know that all things turned around good for Job. Even in the end, Job said, I heard about you from say so, but now I have seen you face to face. His, his face was no longer hidden for Job as God revealed his face to him. And then Jesus, he was hiding his face to the Emmaus uh, travelers. You know, the two guys that were traveling to the, to the town of Emmaus and Jesus joined them after his resurrection. And they were still talking about the death of Jesus. And Jesus said, then what has happened? He was walking with them and they didn't recognize him. God has mysterious ways to hide his face and yet he is present in our midst. Jesus hid his face for Mary when she went to the grave to look for him. And then he said over so, of a sudden, Mary, and then she recognized and her eyes were opened. God has a way to hide his face. In the upper room on the day of Pentecost, 500 people were seeking God and he hid his face. And then, uh, oh, 380 or so left. The Bible said that in the end, 120 were in the upper room when the fire fall. God at times hide his face. That is one of the mysterious things. God doesn't work like in the world. He may not show up or at least we may not see him show up. Now we go to an amazing story that is so amazing in the book of Genesis. We read the story of Abraham, his 12 sons. He had the 12 sons, as you know. And he had 10 sons from a few different women, but the two sons was Benjamin and Joseph. He had with his beloved wife. And then, now, he was pampering Joseph and Benjamin because he loved their mother more. But she died. Rebecca died um, because of sin, anyway. But uh, he pampered that little boy. And... Uh, and he gave him a colorful mantle. He blessed him uh, in an amazing way. And, and his brothers became jealous. And unfortunately, I have to say this, that even among Christians, we, at times we see this type of jealousy. Uh, when someone is blessed with more miracles or a bigger ministry or amazing prophetic revelations or visions or, or whatever things that he may have in his ministry, that, uh, that jealousy may come up into our minds because we still uh, struggle with the carnal mindsets. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this is a shadow story that we can apply to our situation. It happened to Joseph. His brothers were jealous. And then his father sent him one day. His brothers were taking care of the sheep in the field. And, uh, and so uh, then uh, his father sent him to the field, Jacob, and he said, inspect your brothers and bring some food to them and, and then report to me. And, and, and uh, the truth is that Joseph re always reported to his father that what was going on and also telling maybe some details they didn't like and they hated him for that. And then he had his dreams. Uh, maybe you have dreams dreams of a global ministry, dreams of a, a ministry in another country, dreams of doing things for God. And uh, they hated him for his dreams. They, they said, you a dreamer, you're just dreaming things. Who do you think you are? And uh, anyway, and one day Joseph was uh, called by his father to send food to his brothers. And when they saw him from a distance, they said, here is this dreamer, let's kill him. This is a very painful story because these are not, these are not the pagans trying to kill him. This is not, the, not the, another religious people trying to kill him. This is fellow Christians, fellow brothers trying to kill Joseph. So when he arrived, first they throw him in the pit. And it was a dry pit and he was, he was there at the bottom of the pit. Hopelessly, how could he fight his bigger brothers? And he, he, he was lost in that pit. And then they were considering how to kill him. And, uh, 
and then to report to uh, to his father that what happened. But then it was, and it, that is an amazing story that I found uh, in the Bible that uh, actually it was Judah of the 12 brothers. He said, uh, let's not kill him so that, uh, and I read here from Genesis 37, verse 26. So Judah said to his brothers, what profited there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. So now he was really a businessman, you know. He said, let's not kill him, but we make money out of him. He sold his brother to fill his own pocket, not considering that he would break the heart of his own father. And so Judah initiated his ideas and his brothers agreed with him to do that. And so they took his colorful mantle and slaughtered a sheep, dipped his cloth in the blood of the sheep and, and tore it into pieces. And then when they went home, they said, most likely a lion has killed a, a Joseph and we found his cloth like this. And, and this is all typology. If you know the Bible, the mantle, call for mantle, speaks about anointing, about abilities, about giftings. They were just jealous. They wanted to destroy him. But I want you to know something. Whatever people try to do to you, they can never stop God's will for your life to be fulfilled. For God will make everything work together for good. But... The story was not just a shortcut story. There was a long road to the fulfillment of God's dream. You know that he dreamed that uh, the 12 shells of his brothers were bowing down for his shells and the 12 stars were bowing down for his star. And that's why they were angry at him. Who do you think you are? Are you bigger, bigger better than us? And, and now he was sold into slavery into Egypt. And uh, he came into Egypt and they made him a slave in the house of a high government official by the name of Potiphar. And he was doing very good in that house. And the Bible says a few amazing things. It says that Potiphar acknowledged that God was with him. Isn't that amazing? Because Potiphar was not of the Jewish religion. He served the Egyptian gods. But he saw something on Joseph in his slavery. I mean, he was a slave. He was taken away from his father. He was in a strange country and there he was. And, and he saw that God was with him. And he made him the master over the slaves. And he made him to live even in his own house. No, not in the rooms of the slaves. He slept in the house of Potiphar. So he was promoted even in his hardships. He was promoted. Then secondly... Then his wife, the wife of Potiphar, fell in love with the young man and tried to seduce him into sexual sin, and he refused. And then she got so mad at him that he refused her advances. And, and I like this young man because he didn't compromise. Even imagine, he missed the love of his mother who died. Now he missed the love of his father. He was thrown into prison, and now he was a slave. And now this woman was offering him love it was easy to run into this temptation and find some consolation in in a false sexual relationship but he had this integrity in his heart he didn't compromise he said no how can i sin against my master potiphar how can i sin against the living god he refused and she got so mad that now she falsely accusing her him of raping her and the husband came home and threw him into prison. Now, that is a very sad story. You think, what will happen to, how can all these things work together for good? We will find out after the break.
So let's find out how God really made all these difficult things work together for good for Joseph. So as he was now thrown into prison, again we see an amazing thing happening. Even the prison ward, the guy who was taking care of the prison, saw that God was with Joseph. Even though he was not a believer in the God of Israel, he recognized something remarkable about this boy. And he made him also master in the prison. And then there were two other guys in the prison, servants of the Pharaoh, and he prophesied over them. And he's trying to get himself out of prison because the one guy he prophesied he would die and the other one he would be released and it happened accordingly. And so when the guy was released, the one who was pouring the wine to the king, he said, when you come out, please remember me. So he was actually trying to use his prophetic gift and his dream explanation gift to get himself out of prison. But God didn't allow that to happen. God, the Bible says that the man forgot about Joseph until God himself reminded the one who poured the wine that uh, Joseph was in prison. And how did it happen? Well, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt had a dream and the dream disturbed him. And he was trying to seek counsel. What is the meaning of this dream? And so then the one who poured the wine all of a sudden remembered how this guy in prison interpreted his dream that he would be released and the baker would be hanged. And so he remembered it and he said to Pharaoh, you know, there was a young man into prison and uh, he explained my dream that the baker would be hanged and I would be released and Pharaoh was impressed. And immediately he called Joseph out of prison. And here is, a, it has nothing to do with Joseph's doing. It was God making all things work together for good. Actually, his brothers were instrumental to bring him into his destiny. His destiny went through a very rocky road, first downwards into the pit, into the slavery, into the prison. But then all of a sudden on one day, he was taken to the throne. And he explained the dream of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh saw the wisdom of God and he made him actually vice president, so to speak. He made him the second man in the whole country. He ruled all over Egypt overnight, imagine, from being in prison now to the throne. From being the lowest, he became the highest overnight by the power of God Almighty. How truthfully God is making all things work together for good and not only for Joseph. Because in the dream of Pharaoh, it was revealed there would be seven years of prosperity and then followed by seven years of famine. And the wisdom of God into Joseph was that in the years of prosperity, they would store food for the time of famine so that they would survive. And not only them, even many other nations surrounding Egypt. God had his plan in mind and he knew what was going to come. And so according to the plans of Joseph, food was stored. But way back in Israel, imagine, just follow me for a moment. He was in Egypt eating good food, but his father was suffering. Harvesters failed. They were starving. There was no food. Even they tend to die and they were thinking, what do we do? and they heard that there was food in Egypt. Now, this is a period of 20 years. You have to understand that the almost 20 years passed by before the dream that God gave to Joseph went into fulfillment. And so finally, they decided to go to Egypt. They took money in their bags and they went to Egypt and they were led before their own brother. And they didn't recognize him. Because now, of course, he married an Egyptian woman. He was clothed like an Egyptian king. They even didn't rec they knew him as a little boy. But now he was a mature man. He was married. He was a king. And when they brought them before him, we read time and again that, uh, that Joseph was so touched emotionally that he left the room and he cried behind the curtain. 
because his heart was going out. These were his brothers. These are the ones that betrayed him. Now he was there to save them. So, and then uh, we, well, there is too much in the story to share in one meeting, but I want to summarize the, the most important part of it. He wanted to see, are they changed? Are they still these jealous, selfish brothers? Are they willing to sacrifice their little brother for their own benefit as they had done with him? So he said, them, do you have another brother? And uh, they said, yes, we have an old father and uh, we have one little brother called Benjamin. He is with his father, but he is the young one and uh, he loves him so much. He had another son and he is no more. And they didn't know they were talking about Joseph to Joseph himself. They were blinded. And he said, uh, when you come again, you need to bring that boy. And uh, so they went home and they eat their food. And when it was finished, they needed to come back. And they said, we need to bring Benjamin because the man told us that we should bring Benjamin. Otherwise, he will not let us go. He, he, we, we will be prisoners and we will not get food. And then Jacob was very much in tears. He said, you took my son. Uh, Joseph and now you will take this one and what if something happened to him and now the amazing thing I want you to understand is this Judah who took the initiative to sell Joseph for his own benefit saw his father's sorrow for 20 years I'm wondering how many times he have thought shall I tell my father the truth but he couldn't do it maybe his pride maybe his fear I don't know they lived with that secret for 20 years, but in the timing of God, now that secret was going to be revealed without their involvement. God himself did it. So, ultimately, now the same Joseph said, I will be ransom for the little boy. If anything happened with this little boy, let my life be in place of the little boy. I, I, I will be a ransom for that little boy. So finally, now Jacob have no choice but then to let the little boy go with his brothers to Egypt. So they went to Egypt and then uh, Joseph made a banquet for them and he put them on the edge. And then Benjamin, you know, he did the remarkable thing. They gave, he gave them all clothes and he gave Benjamin seven dresses. And then he gave them all food, but on the plate of Benjamin, he put sevenfold. Why did he do that? He was testing them. He was the younger brother being blessed by his father, and they got jealous. Now his own little brother, he blessed them beyond the others to see, were they still jealous? Were they envying the little one? But he didn't see that, he, but he wasn't convinced. He wanted to know are they really changed? So, as they went back to their homeland, he put the cup, the, the definition cup, into the barrel of Benjamin and ran after them. You have stolen my cup. And they went to look into the bags and they found it in the back of Benjamin. Now they were heartbroken. They, he said, now Benjamin will be a slave to my, he stole my cup. And they all went back to Egypt heartbroken. And then the unfolding of the story is so amazing in, in chapter 45. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, that um, Judah now stood up and he said to Joseph, let me please speak to you. I gave myself as a ransom for this boy to my father. If I would come back without this boy, he will die. And, and I couldn't bear. I have seen him suffering for 20 years in the loss of the other son. It would break my heart to see him break again, losing another young one. And, 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 and so he said, let my life be in the place of this little boy. That's what he in essence said. Uh, and I have it here. It says, now therefore, please, let your servant remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord and let the lad go up with his brothers. For how shall I go up to my father if the lad is not with me, lest perhaps I see the evil that would come upon my father. 
Now, I want you to see the change that God brought in the life of Judah. First, he sold his little brother to fill his own pocket at the expense of breaking the heart of his father. Now he was changed. He sold himself as a ransom for his little brother because he couldn't bear to see his father's heart broken again. Now, when Joseph saw this total change of perception, the total change in the life of Judah, now the Bible says, then Joseph, this is in chapter 45, I want you to read it, verse 1, then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out. You see, when Joseph saw the chains in Judah, he said, he's changed. He's no longer this jealous boy. He has come to a sacrificial lifestyle. And now he trusted it to show himself to his brothers. And he made himself known. And the Bible says, so no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him before they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. He had another perspective. He no longer saw what his brothers did to him. It was wrong, but he saw the hand of God. He said, God used it to send me ahead of you to save you today and many other nations. God made everything work together for good. What an amazing story. It looked like his brothers were against him, but God used it so that he would be an instrument to save his own brothers, his own family and many other nations as well. Now, after a while, when Jacob also came to Egypt and then he died, and then we, lead, we read in the last part, this is in uh, chapter, uh, chapter 49, uh, then uh, as, uh, as uh, Jacob died, they were very afraid, and they said, now uh, Joseph will revenge all the evil we did to him. And we read in, 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 in the book of Genesis, uh, as his brother said, We pay thee, forgive the transgressions of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spoke unto him. I mean, Joseph had no hard feelings anymore. There was no revenge. What a wonderful man is Joseph. There was no revenge in his heart at all. He had received a divine perspective how God has weaved all the difficulties in favor of himself and of others. And so he wept and his brothers also went and fell down before his face and they said, Behold, we are your bondmen, we are your slaves. And Joseph said to them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. You know, you don't have to fear. And as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring to pass as it, is, as it is today, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will sustain you and, uh, and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly unto them. I want you to know the devil put Jesus on the cross. At least he thought he did. But God meant it for good. He rose from the dead in three days. Jesus is alive. The same God who turned this crucifixion for our salvation, who brought the slavery for Joseph for the salvation of his brothers, will make everything work together for good for those who love God and God according to his purposes. If you're called, if you love God, be confident, be of good cheer, be blessed. This is food for your heart. Be encouraged. See you next time.